And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set for game two here between Northwest and ICC. Northwest took game one, four to nothing over the Lady Indians. As we're moments away from getting game two started here, we don't have a lineup for Northwest. So we'll have to bring you the batters as they come to the plate. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the Coca-Cola starting lineup here for the Lady Indians. Leading off this time, we have a little changeup. Heather Dillard will lead off. She'll be playing center field. Haley Moore will be batting second. Uh, playing shortstop, Kat Carver will be batting third and playing second. Watterson will be batting fourth, playing third. You've got Henderson playing first base. Bonner will be your BP, uh, excuse me, DP. Lankford will be catching. Hopper will be play, playing in right field, batting eighth. And Elder will be batting ninth. And pitching game two for the Lady Indians will be sophomore Montana Hawkins. And as we said, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how the calls go here in Game 2 for the Lady Indians as uh, a very questionable call in Game 1 that eventually cost the Lady Indians three runs in that ending by the infield umpire. Had a extremely, extremely heated argument with uh, head coach Andy Kirk is now behind the plate, so... Hopefully that won't carry over here in game two. An update on baseball. The Indians, man, they are down four to nothing in the first inning as they're playing Northwest Florida. Northwest Florida got a pair of home runs in the bottom of the first as they jumped out to a quick four to nothing lead over the Indians. That's going on in Decatur. And now it goes to the second, or excuse me, Indians go scoreless in the top of the second. So it's 4 nothing Northwest Florida in the middle of the second inning. As we're going to be moments away from getting this one started here, Dean will lead things off here for the Rangers. She was the leadoff batter in game one for Northwest. As we said, Montana Hawkins is in the circle for the Indians. Behind the plate is Ashley Lankford. That is your battery for game two here. First pitch, high for a ball. Hawkins was a all-state pitcher last year. Has struggled a little bit this season. Uh, had uh, a few arm problems to start the beginning part of the year, so trying to work through those. That pitch in there for a strike. Count goes now two and one on Dean. That pitch high and outside for a ball. So Dean quickly ahead in the count here. 3-1. This pitch lifted. Center fielder Dillard walking up and making the catch for out number one. Now coming to the plate is going to be Hilton. For Northwest. 
believe Hilton came in as a replacement batter in the first game. She hit out to center field and then Dillard threw the runner out at home for the final out of the bottom of the seventh. And Hawkins asking for a new ball. So Helton digs in. That pitch in there for a strike. 2 1 is the count here on Helton. That pitch finds the outside corner of the plate for strike two, even though the count now at two and two. We're scoreless in the top of the first inning of game two between ICC and Northwest. There's a dribbler, second baseman, gloves, throw over in time for the out. Score that one four to three on the putout. Now up is going to be Andy Barrett. Barrett will step in with two outs here in the top of the first inning. Lady Indians trying to earn a split today. Is that pitch high and outside for a ball? There's a shot. And a liner to the third baseman who steps in front of it and gets the out for the third out of the inning. Three up, three down for Northwest. ICC coming to the bat in the bottom half of the inning. Dillard, Moore, and Carver. And we do welcome everyone here to game two between ICC and Northwest. Northwest went three up, three down in the top half of the inning. Due up here is going to be Dillard, Moore, and Carver to start the bottom half of the first here in Fulton. In the circle is going to be Kimes. Dillard's will lead things off here for ICC. First pitch in there for strike one. This pitch foul back for strike two. Sun starting to set here in Fulton, and it is getting difficult to see in the press box. Dillard fouls that one off. 0 and 2 is your count here on Dillard. Dillard, who was a number nine batter, is a number one batter today here in game two. Fouls that one back. So Heather battling, staying alive.
A Trust Mart Bank scoreboard update, and that's not looking good for the Indians. They're down six to nothing to Northwest Florida. And that's in the second. Hit by Diller. Diller's gonna leg it out, and she is safe. Close call there at first base. For a second, looked like the uh, infield umpire wanted to call her out. Then at the last second, waved her off safe. So a leadoff single here in the bottom of the first inning by Dillard. Now we'll bring up Haley Moore. Moore, who led off in game one. Digs in here with no outs and a runner on first. Dillard looked like she was going, squared to butt, but pulled back on the high pitch. Like a pitch out from the go that time by Northwest. Shows butt, pulls back, hits it. And looked like the Northwest player actually touched it in fair territory. No argument for Coach Kurt, so going to say that she didn't. So Dillard, who was actually on third, and Moore, who was actually almost to second, showing off their speed right there. And a tough break, because if she would have made contact with that in fair territory, you got to think Dillard would have scored, and, and Moore likely could have ended up on third. Well, ICC wants to get off to a good start here in game two. Squares to butt, fouls it off. One and two now is the count on Haley Moore. Moore, this one, going to find the gap. Dillard checks up. Now he's going to run to third. Andy's Kurt's going to hold her up at third base. It's a nice relay quickly in that time. So back-to-back -back singles to start this one off for the Lady Indians. Now up is going to be Cat Carver with runners on the corners. No outs here. So you've got Moore with speed on first and speed on third. And Dillard, Moore gets a big jump. Does it go? Let's go see if she could bait a throw, but instead they quickly look down to third base, look the runner back, and Dillard back to third. No score, no outs, bottom of the first inning. ICC with runners on the corner and Cat Carver at the plate. Carver stands in and takes it. Moore will advance to second without a throw. And so now, a pair of runners in scoring position here for Cat Carver. Got to think a base hit, anything to the outfield. Will score a pair of runs, and that one in there for a strike. This is Kimes pitching for Northwest. And there's a shot, shortstop gets it. Looks across the way, fires over to first, and they're going to get her just by half a step. Had a slight hesitation that time. And Cat nearly legged out that one. But the Lady Indians get a run. First run in 25 innings versus Northwest. Northwest has had three back-to-back-to-back -back -back shutouts against the Lady Indians, so that breaks open. A scoreless drought in a big way. There's a big shot by Corey Waterson down the first baseline. Corey was going to get a single. And Haley Moore scores from second. And the Lady Indians getting the start they were hoping to get here in game two. Time is called. And Northwest is going to go out. And looks like we've already got a pitching change here. And that is going to be the case. So it didn't take very long for the Lady Indians to knock Kimes out of the circle. She will be replaced now by number six, Lydia Diaz.
we check in for another Trustmark Bank scoreboard update. As we move to the top of the third, Northwest Florida up six to nothing over the Indians. So the Indians not getting a good start down in East Central. Of course, Northwest Florida, a baseball power in the state of Florida. And I tell you, folks, once North Division play in baseball starts, it's going to be an exciting year. As there are tons of good teams in the North this year. You've got two teams ranked right now in the Rangers and East Mississippi. Mississippi Delta playing well, ICC playing well. And, of course, Northeast is the defending North champs. So it should be an exciting baseball season. You'll be able to check out a lot of that this season here on our webcast at Let's Go ICC, as well as our radio broadcast on WAFM 95.7. FM95radio.com. Henderson turns into one but lifts it to mile high and foul. Boy, if Henderson could have got extended on that one, it could have still be in the air right now. As she could hit for tons of power. There's one out in the bottom of the first. ICC leading this one two to nothing with a runner on first. That's Corey Watterson, Emily Henderson at the plate. Hard shot to the third baseman. Going to try to get her at second. Does so. Throw in first is not in time. So, Hender excuse me, yes, Henderson will reach on the fielder's choice and nearly beating the throw that time to second as the second baseman was a little slow to cover. So now two away here. And this is going to be Bonner, the DP, coming to the plate for the Lady Indians. Henderson on first, two away, bottom of the first inning, two to nothing. ICC leads it after losing game one, four to nothing. That pitch finds the corner of the plate for strike one. Change up. Henderson's trying to steal and gets her. Henderson caught stealing on the play that time to end the inning. But Lady Indians push two runs across. They lead it two to nothing after one complete here in game two. And welcome back to action. Montana Hawkins still in the circle here for the Lady Indians. First pitch is hit, lifted on. Outfielders charging in. Miscommunication that time as it looked like Dillard had a feed on it, but neither one communicated, so it would drop for a base hit. As that was number 22, Alford for Northwest with the hit.
trying to update Twitter as well as broadcast a game and do 15 other things at once, so bear with me real quick. It's Trustmark Bank Scoreboard Update. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Let's Go ICC, at Let's Go ICC on Twitter. Indians down 6 nothing after two completes in Northwest Florida in baseball. Now up is number 12, Alex Barrett. We do have a runner in for Northwest. And a great stop that time behind the dish by Lankford. Running in the game for Northwest is Turnip Seed. So this is Alex Barrett, we talked about, a transfer from Jones County Junior College. That pitch in there for a strike by Hawkins. Andy and Alex both transferred in from Jones County to Northwest. They're both from the Horn Lake area. Both play infield. Both sophomores. Both everything here. I guess you can probably sisters. That pitch gets away. And so the runner will advance to second. And that pitch gets away, but a good job once again. So runner on second. Pitch grounded forward. Watterson gets it, throws across the way, but not in time. That ball right there just didn't find any legs after it was hit. Watterson charged up as quickly as she could, but just could not make the play. And so now at the plate is going to be Die. Let's see, hold on. Maloney corrected me a while ago, so let me make sure I get it right so he'll... Won't talk bad about me. Dias. Dias at the plate now. Lydia Dias who came in to pitch. As part of that first inning, was able to come in and get the final batter out. That pitch gets away. Runner's going to try to score from third and no throw in time. And then the heads-up run that time by the runner on first gets all the way around to third. So heads-up base running. And Coach Kirk is going to come out and talk to his pitcher here. So now Northwest with a chance to tie the game. It's 2-1 right now, ICC. And so Dias, a chance to tie this one up with the tying run at third. No outs here. We're waiting to see the umpire's call here on the count. We believe it's, yes, 1-0 is the count. And that pitch low in the dirt. 2-0, now the count. Sun setting here in Fulton makes it extremely difficult to look into the sun in this game as it is just killer in the press box. 3-0 is the count now. There's a pitch right down the middle of the plate for a strike. Three and one now is the count on Dias. Dias taken the whole way that time.
That time, Dias chasing a low pitch. Now the count goes full, 3-2 here. Hawkins trying to battle back. There it is, good job by Hawkins. Coming back in to get the strikeout for out number one here in the inning. Now up is going to be Haley Vance. Vance played third in game one. As we said, we didn't get a roster or a lineup, if you will, here from Northwest in game two. So we're not for sure what the Coca-Cola defensive setup is. Is that pitch in there for a strike? Your Coca-Cola battery right now for ICC Hawkins pitching. And you've got Lankford behind the plate. And Hawkins... After throwing three straight balls, now has delivered five straight strikes. One away, 2-1 is your score. ICC with a runner on third base. And Hawkins now is dealing. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Now at the dish is Nimkick. That pitch low for a ball. Or excuse me, Nimick at the plate. Liner and going to say got her out. Was it for sure? So threw over to first and then the judge behind the plate. Called her out on the line out. So ICC gets out of that inning with minimum damage done. Going to try to come back and get some runs here in the bottom part of the second. Two to one. Lady Indians lead it. Trying to earn the split today with Northwest. And welcome back to action. We move now to the top of the second inning. ICC, or excuse me, bottom of the second. ICC leading it two to one. This is Bonner, the DP at the dish for ICC. First pitch inside for a ball. Trust Mark Bain scoreboard update. Not looking good for the Indians right now. They're down seven to nothing to Northwest Florida College down at East Central. That pitch in there for a strike. Breaking pitch finds the corner of the plate for strike two. One and two now is the count on Bonner. We're going to try to adjust our camera as we can as the sun sets. It starts to make things a bit difficult once we start getting that glare. Change up just a bit too far outside. And so now the count evens up at two and two. No outs. Bottom of the second. 2-1 ICC leads it. Bonner hits a dribble to the shortstop. Throw across the way. It's high and not in time. 
Bonner reaches on the error. Don't really know if the first baseman needed to jump on that throw. As it looked like she had had her beat and just jumped to go up and get it and actually had to bring her glove down once she jumped to catch it. So a break there for the Lady Indians. And now up is the catcher, Ashley Lankford. Lankford did some work behind the dish in that first inning. Shows butt, pops it up, and it is going to be foul. Ooh, dangerous play right there for the Lady Indians. And Lankford popping herself in the helmet knows that uh, probably should have let that one go as it was a high pitch. ICC trying to play a little small ball to advance some runners around. Shows bunt. Pulls back. Pitches outside for a ball. You've got Bonner on first. No outs. One and one count here. Two to one is your score in favor of ICC. We're in the bottom of the second of game two against Northwest. Northwest took game one four to nothing. So ICC trying to earn the sweep. Another bunt popped up. Catcher comes up and makes the play in fair territory. So got to get on top of those pitches when you go to bunt. Tough to do because look, she got a couple of rise balls out of the zone that time. Trying to make contact on them, but just couldn't do so. Now up is going to be the right fielder, Kara Hopper. Hopper digs in with one away and a runner on first. Runner goes. Hopper swings. Drills one down the line. Rip pulls it foul, though. So 0-1 is the count here on Hopper. Hopper bunts, lays it down, but it rolls foul. Or excuse me, they're going to say it was fair. And an E2 on the play will put Hopper on. That ball never got out of the batter's box. Or it rolled back into the batter's box, I can say. So the throw from second, or excuse me, the throw from the catcher to first was high. Hopper reached on the error officially, and Langford advanced to third. So now one away here, Elder at the dish with runners on the corner. Elder stands in, takes the first pitch inside for a ball. ICC trying to push this back up to a two-run lead. Elder stands in, takes the pitch high. Runner falls, get Bates to throw. The throw gets away. And Hopper that time, a little razzle-dazzle by the Lady Indians. And they get the play. Good job by Hopper. We've seen the Lady Indians do that before. As the runner just trips as if she's coming off the base, lays down. The throw gets away, and Bonner scores after the throw gets away from the first baseman. So now the Lady Indians up 3-1. It's a bad throw by the second baseman, so we'll have to uh, see at the end of the game how they rule that, if that's going to be a stolen base or if that's going to be an E2 on the play. Or Kevin Maloney, if you're watching and would like to chime in via text message, do so as the throw was more towards the second baseman than first base. Elder shows bunt, pulls back, then lays it down. And it's going to be foul. Do apologize for having to jump the camera back and forth. It is just me today running the camera. Running Twitter, updating softball, updating baseball. We do want to wish the head coach of the Lady Rangers a get well soon. 
as Maloney just texts me saying that the head coach is um, Mike Rowan is out with kidney stones, so did not make the trip today with the Rangers to Fulton. So if you're watching at home, Coach Rowan, get well soon, as those things are nothing to mess with. There's a shot down the line, but once again, dress foul. That one foul by a couple of feet for Elder. So we've got one away here in the bottom of the second. 3-1 is your lead for the Lady Indians. Runner on first is Hopper. She reached on an error. That pitch outside for a ball. At the dish is Elder. Three balls, two strikes is the count right now. So a full count on Elder. Payoff pitch coming. Hit and foul back out of play. So three and two will stay the count. Good job staying alive at the bat right now for Elder. Elder trying to get on base, keep this inning going here, see if they can't string together a, a long run of runs here. We talked about four nothing was the game one win. Elder! Touches one, it's drifting back, back and to the wall for the second time as Elder pops out. And I'm telling you folks, she has done that a lot this season, so don't be surprised if you don't hear of Elder getting a couple of those shots out of here. Is that when the center fielder's back was against the fence for out number two. We go back to the top of the lineup now with Heather, Heather Dillard who singled and scored a run her first time up. Dillard takes that first pitch for a strike. But it's popped up and it's going to hit and it's actually going to be kicked fair. Hopper, good job of base running by Hopper that time. Knew it was the possible third out. Kept running as she turned the base that time. The catcher came up, tried to make a play on the ball. After it hit the ground, she was still, her momentum carried her forward. She booted it forward. And so that's going to be an infield single for Dillard. And Hopper. Advances to third, so runners on the quarters. For the Lady Indians, and now up is Haley Moore. Moore singled and scored a run, stole a base her first time up. Trying to add a few more runs to the board here. Swings on the first pitch, popped up. Third baseman comes over, makes a play on it, and is out. So the Lady Indians add a run in the bottom of the second. as they lead it three to one here after two complete in game two.
And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we now shift to the top of the third inning. Montana Hawkins still in the circle for the Lady Indians. This is game two of the doubleheader today. A great day for softball. Our state champion basketball coach, Grant Pate, joining us in the press box. It was a fun season to keep up with the Indians. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just interview Grant while you're up here. Surprise you. Grant, we'll just pass this back and forth between the two of us. But uh, the season you guys had this year it was a fun season. Ended up winning the state championship, unfortunately. You know, lose to a really good Northwest team in the Region 23. But it was a season that we dubbed the guys the Cardiac Kids. Really don't make you a young guy, but it was a fun season for Rick. No, it wasn't, Adam. I mean, it was a it was a blessing and a, a true memory, you know, that will last a lifetime. And we'll always look back on this season and just, you know, just all the fun memories and, you know, the guys that – they were with us, the sophomore class that led us through this this great season, and and it ended on a tough note. But you know, um, we've got a lot to be proud of, and we're we're happy the way things turned out. It was a one-two count right now on the Northwest batter and coach. I know you have four sophomores this year, uh, true leaders, two four good guys that you really needed to be able to have this special of a season. As this pitch is popped back and out of play, but if you would, Grant, just uh, talk about those four, four sophomores you had this season. Adam, we've got four guys that just, um, you know, they came in with us. You know, we're, we're two years old here at ICC, and they're two-year guys. Um, Jonathan McGee, Tory Rice, uh, Randy Brown, and Alex Anderson joined us uh, after one year and transferred over to Jacksonville State. And, you know, they did a tremendous job, and, and we're, we just owe a lot to them and uh, are thankful for them and their commitment and their determination. And, and uh, just just being winners for us, you know, winners every day on the court and off the court. This pitch to Turner is fouled off. Count stays at two and two. Right now your score three one here in the top of the third. We're talking with ICC men's basketball coach Grant Pate about his season this year. Uh, Grant, you know, now your second half of the season starts. You're out hitting the recruiting trail. Uh, but here today supporting the Lady Indians, we had a great crowd. As there's a pop-up, Carver steps back and puts it out for out number one of the inning, but uh, just talk about supporting the girls here because they were out supporting you guys in that state championship and just sort of the importance of that uh, here at ICC. You know, at ICC, you feel the family atmosphere. You feel everyone supporting each other, and, and it takes everybody. It takes the whole community um, here at ICC, the, the administration, the faculty, the staff, the students, and um, it was just a – it was an outstanding year, and we're so grateful to everybody that – that participated in our season and, and just want to just want to support everybody. Want to support Coach Kirk here with the softball program and and he's done an outstanding job and and it's a big division game this today and want to come out and watch those guys play. That last at bat was by Dean and she flew out to center field. Talking to Coach Kirk, he stopped by a little earlier. Alfred to put the microphone in front of him. He he, he ran away from that coach. So uh, we, of course uh, Adam Andy brother. So we have to co coach up uh, Adam a little bit on that uh, to get him on these microphones. That's right. We'll we'll be working on him. You know he's he's got the uh, the the um, title of Hollywood right now, and um, but we'll get him going. And as we go, you know he's gonna you know, work on that microphone and and uh, get him on more interviews. But uh, but they do a great job. And we're thankful for Coach um, Adam Kirk. You know our system with men's basketball. He does an outstanding job. You know just working with our guys academically and on the court and uh, and also recruiting wise. He hits that recruiting trail. And, um, you know, with, with Andy, he does a great job here on the diamond as well. And that's Coach Grant Pate. Grant, appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk to us. And uh, here with the softball game, you're welcome to stay up here all day. If you want to take over the microphone and do the play-by-play -play for softball, you're welcome to. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> and we appreciate Coach Pate just taking a few moments to talk to us here. We've got two outs in the top of the third inning. Three to one is your score. This is Helton at the dish. She fouls it off towards the ICC dugout. So a couple of ladies run away from the ball. Coach Kerry Simmons was actually going for the ball. So the fearless leader in Coach Simmons across the way. 3-1 is your score, top of the third. Hawkins, oh, my goodness. Pretty pitch to sit her down on, but the umpire says, nope, that's ball three. So the count goes full here on Helton. <laughs> and 
There's a dribbler and a nice grab by Hawkins. Toss over to first. One to three on the put out. A good job defensively playing our Gardner position that time by Hawkins to get the third out of the inning. A three up, three down inning there for Northwest. Three to one is your score here in game two. ICC leads it back with more right after this. And welcome back to action. Now we're in the bottom of the third inning. Due up is Carver, Watterson, and Henderson here for the Lady Indians as they lead it 3-1. to one. First pitch, a little drop ball that dropped a little too soon. Goes for ball one. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this webcast today. I want to welcome all of our friends from Northwest that's watching today's game. Also want to thank Kevin Maloney. He's been dropping me name corrections as well as updates and much, much more uh, from the Northwest side. He unfortunately said he couldn't be here today after uh, making the trip back from Clinton as the Rangers made a run to the semifinals of the Region 23 tournament, lost a heartbreaker in the semifinals to Pearl River. Here's the pitch. Carver takes it for a strike. Cat drove in a run on a ground out to short her first time up. Woo, takes that one for a strike. Same pitch that was a ball from Hawkins earlier. So 3-2 is the count here on Carver, the leadoff batter. And the third, Carver rips one down the line, but just foul. She knifed that one down there. Third baseman didn't have any time to react, but it took a hard, hard bounce away from the bag, about three foot down the line. So battling to stay alive here with a 3-2 count is Carver. Change up, Carver stretches out, gets a piece of it. This one drifting back and going to be just short as the center fielder races over for out number one. Carver didn't quite get all of that one, but she did give it a ride. As the wind blowing in the park today. So you're really going to have to touch one to get one out of here. Now up is Watterson. Watterson singled and drove in a run. Part of that two-run bottom of the first inning. Watterson takes that first pitch for a strike. Remind everyone that our first radio broadcast of the season will be next Saturday at Northeast as the Indians clash with the Tigers as we renew the rivalry. That will be broadcast on FM95Radio.com as well as WAFM 95.7 FM out of Amory. Watterson swings on this one, pops it up a mile high and out of play. And so one and two now is the count on Corey.
Bartison reaches down, chases one out of the zone, fouls it off. Count stays one and two. We want to thank Coach Grant Pate for coming by during the top part of that inning to talk with us about this basketball season we talked about. Winning a state championship, losing to the Rangers in the quarterfinals of the Region 23 tournament. Of course, the Rangers, man, they shot lights out in that game. Nearly 65 or 70% in the first half, 60% from three. Not a lot you can do against a good basketball team when they're that hot. So 2-2 two -two is the count now on Watterson. Nobody on with one out here in the bottom of the third. ICC leading it 3-1. Watterson turns on one. This one, outfielder kind of stumbled for a second. Thought that if uh, she could have got just a little bit more over it, would have got over the head of the left fielder as she kind of stumbled on her own feet. But was able to get underneath and collect the out number two. So now up will be Emily Henderson. She reached on a fielder's choice. Her first time up was caught stealing to end the inning. That pitch low in the dirt for ball one. I believe our next broadcast, or our next webcast, I should say, will be Monday as ICC will host Holmes in softball. One o'clock start time on that one. Of course, if you're in the area, we do invite you out to come support the Lady Indians. There's a shot to the gap, and it is going to be down. Possible extra base hit. Henderson rounds first. Going to go into second with a stand-up double. So a two-out double by Henderson keeps this inning alive. And now up will be Bonner. So Bonner will dig in here. She reached on an error and eventually came around to score. Well, she led off the second inning, so a chance to extend this 3-1 lead here in the bottom of the third with two outs for the Lady Indians. Bonner swings on the first pitch, pulls it foul down the third baseline. We talked about Bonner. She's the DP for this game. She's listed as a catcher and third baseman. She's a freshman out of Fayette, Alabama. She went to Fayette County High School before signing with the Lady Indians. That pitch in the dirt skips across for a ball. Right now, it's 10 to nothing, Northwest Florida over the Indians in the first of two games today for the Indians. Bonner pops this one up. It's going to be out of play. One and two is now the count. That pitch just outside for ball two. Northwest Florida still pouring it on with two outs. They're now getting an RBI single to take 11 to nothing lead over the Indians. Your score here, three to one, ICC. Bonner takes that pitch high for a ball. Three, two pitch coming up here for Northwest. Runner is on second for ICC. That's Emily Henderson. If Bonner was to reach, Lankford would be up next. There's a dribbler to third. Now they're going to say it's foul as it came off her foot. Now anybody that's played baseball or softball knows that that does not feel good at all. Especially if you foul off the inside, come off that ankle or off the top of your foot. One of those that's one of those pains that kind of just makes you feel sick for a second. 
Either way it goes, the count stays full. Two outs, bottom of the third, 3-1 ICC. Henderson on second, Bonner at the plate. Bonner fouls it off to stay alive. And there's ball four, so a good at bat that time by Bonner. Fouled off three or four pitches, able to battle to stay alive, earned the walk, and now up will be the catcher in Bonner. And we're going to have a pitching change in for Northwest. As this is Holiday who will be entering the contest for the Rangers. Third pitcher of the day for Northwest. So we're going to step away, and we'll be back with more right after this. And we're back to action now as Holiday takes over in the circle with two outs. No count on Lankford. Lankford flew out on a pop-up, or I guess a pop-up to the catcher on a bunt attempt. Swings on this one, is back, 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 and gone. First pitch that Lankford sees, and she sends it over the fence and left. And that's a three-run home run for Ashley Lankford. We talked about you were gonna to have to touch one to get one out of here. And she touched that one. And it went for days. So a big home run there, puts the three spot on the board here, and ICC now leads it six to one. Now Kara Hopper, who reached on an error her first time up, swings on this one, lifts it, left fielder drifting, drifting, and comes up and makes the play for out number three. Well, a big time, two, a three run home run with two outs by Lankford. Gives the Lady Indians a six to one lead after four, com or excuse me, after three complete.
And we're back to action. Hawkins still in pitching for the Lady Indians. This one fouled back and oh, almost a play by one of the fans, but dropped the ball. Getting a hard time from the ICC fans out here. This is Andy Barrett at the plate. Hawkins tried that changeup pitch, but just went a little too inside. He was at the count now at one and one. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Six to one is your score in favor of the Indians. That pitch gets away from Hawkins. Two one now is the count. Time is called. Langford, who we just had that big three-run home run, comes out and talks to her battery mate in Hawkins. After this next pitch, we'll give you the Coca-Cola defensive lineup for the Indians. There's a shot and pulled foul. We talked about Hawkins pitching behind the plate is Langford at first base. Henderson, second base is Carver. Third base, Watterson, shortstop is... Moore, and in the outfield, you go from left to right. You've got Elder. Center fielder is Dillard, and right field is Hopper. That pitch fouled off. Two and two remains your count now on Barrett. That pitch lowered in the dirt. Now the count goes 3-2. We're in the top of the fourth of game two. And that's ball four. As the sun's starting to set over the waterway. Be glad when that thing gets down so we can start seeing a little bit. So now this is going to be offered at the plate. Offered singled her first time up, her courtesy runner. Turnip seed came in, advanced on a wild pitch. Now they're trying to go to third, but instead going to check up and head back to second. So that will be an advance on a wild pitch. So the runner on second now. Shot right back up the middle. Hawkins deflects it, tosses over to third. Or excuse me, first. Almost turned two across the way. Good job by Hawkins that time. To lock that down and get the out at first. Moore coming in to check on her pitcher. That's one thing Hawkins has always done well, especially during her freshman season, was defend her position. That time, just that quick reaction to knock the ball down. Actually saved a run on that for the first out as a runner. Had to stay to third. Almost got a double play as a runner. Kind of slipped trying to get back. So that pitch is going to be low for a ball. That pitch gets away from the catcher that time. That one is going to score on a pass ball. It's a little like a pitch right down the middle. Got away from the catcher. And so score the run on the pass ball. Six two is now your score. Hawkins 
Gets that one in there for a strike. So 2-1 now is the count here on Alex Barrett. Pitch just a little low and outside. Couldn't quite get her to chase one. 3-1 now is the count. That pitch in there for a strike. Evens up the count now at three and two. Northwest taking all the way that time. That time pitch fouled off. Hawkins got the batter off balance. Just found a piece of it that time to stay alive as the count stays three and two. Once again, we want to thank everyone for tuning into this webcast. As we're now focusing on our spring sports. Now there's a foul ball. We'll try to have our broadcast Monday against Holmes here in softball. And pending the situation at uh, Northeast next Saturday, and that being the cell service for our wireless card or internet access, we'll try to have a webcast as that pitch low for a ball. We'll try to have a webcast for the Indians baseball doubleheader at Northeast next Saturday. Of course, you can always visit letsgoicc.com. Check the schedule pages for baseball and softball. And we're going to try to broadcast tennis. Don't know how well that's going to work. Still trying to work with Paul Johnson on that. So you can check those. Also, follow us on Twitter. For updates on when we'll be having broadcast, that pitch inside for a ball. The umpire just not giving Hawkins those inside pitches like he is to the Northwest pitcher this ball game. There's a pitch fouled off for a strike. So a runner on first, one away here. We're in the top of the fourth inning. ICC leads it 6-2. to two. You can see there on your computer screen, the sun setting in the background. Pitch lifted up. This is trouble, but Dillard showing off that speed, making a great play out in center field to chase that one down. So a good play that time by the freshman center fielder. She ran cross country in high school, a little bit of track, so she showed off those legs that time. Is a great job running down that one in a hurry for out number two. Now at the dish is number 20, Haley Vance. Vance struck out swinging her first time up. Runner on first, two outs. We're in the top of the fourth. ICC leads it 6-2. to two. Breaking ball gets away. No throw as the runner will advance on a ball in the dirt. So now Northwest with the runner in scoring position. And so Vance trying to spark a rally here. For the Rangers, that pitch finds the zone for a strike. Two and one now is the count here on Vance. Hawkins has two strikeouts on the day, along with a pair of walks and a pair of hits. That one a dribbler, and that's got to be interference on the runner. And that's going to get Coach Kirk out to question that. And boy, if they don't get that call after the first the call in game one, they're going to talk it over. As Moore came up, filled the ball. Moore a sure-handed, and they are going to call her out. Good call that time by the umpires. Otis won. 
And now Northwest coach, actually the assistant coach, who is filling in as the head coach today with Coach Rowan being a bit under the weather. going to come out and talk this one over with the umpires. If anything, they owe it to us after the first game. And so that is going to be the third out of the inning. And your score as we move to the bottom of the fourth, 6-2 to two in favor of the Lady Indians. And welcome back to action as we shift now to the bottom of the fourth inning. ICC leads it 6-2 to two over Northwest, trying to earn a split today with the Rangers after Northwest picked up a 4 to nothing win in game one. This is going to be Rachel Elder to lead things off here. That is a ball one. Pitching for Northwest is Jessica Holliday. Northwest has sent three pitchers to the circle here in game two. That pitch right down the middle of the plate for strike one. Evens with the count now at one and one. Due up here, Elder, Dillard, and Moore. The 9-1-2 batters here for the Indians. Change up that time. Had Elder out ahead of it. Made contact. Fouled it off for strike two. One and two now is the count. We're still looking for the final in game one against Northwest Florida. Down at East Central, the Indians were down 11 to nothing. Elder puts that one for a fly out to right field. Elder's just been making good contact. Just been some nice plays defensively by Northwest. Negating what could have been some base hits. And I'm telling you, she can wake up one day and eat her Wheaties coming into a game. She was close to a pair of home runs earlier in this contest. That pitch high for a ball to Heather Dillard. Dillard, two for two on the day. She scored a run. ICC trying to tack on some insurance runs here in the bottom of the fourth. After Dillard will be Haley Moore. That pitch for a strike. One and one now is the count on the freshman from Ingemar. This pitch popped up, and the catcher, or excuse me, yeah, pitcher comes over and makes the play for out number two. So now up, Haley Moore. Moore is one for two on the day. She scored a run and has stole a base. Haley is on pace to give Kimmy Nichols record of 53 steals in a season a run for its money. As Moore pops this one up, and the shortstop falls. Moore's going to slide in, and the shortstop that time just tripped over the lip of the grass and heads up base running by Moore. And a tough break there for the Rangers. 
as that looked to be a routine out for out number three. Turns in to good things for the Lady Indians here as Moore heads up base running. Never stopped on the play. Slid in for a double at second. So now Kat Carver, who drove in a run on a ground out her first time up, stands in, takes that first pitch for a strike. She's 0 for 2 on the day. Flew out to center her last time up. The base hit could be big here. The Indians could tack on an extra run here. That time fouls that one back for strike two. We have a Trust Bart Bank scoreboard update. Final in five innings. Northwest Florida shuts out the Indians 11 to nothing in the first game of today. ICC will play East Central next down at East Central. So hopefully the Indians can rally after that one. That pitch high for a ball. So Carver with a 1-2 count, stands in, hits a dribbler down the line, but it goes foul. Count stays 1-2. and two. That pitch is gone. Moore takes third. So the second steal of the day for Haley Moore. So now a base hit would be big for Carver. Stands in, takes that one for a ball. So now the count goes full, 3-2. And there's ball four, so Carver will trot down to first, and now up will be Corey Watterson. So Lady Indians trying to spark a two-out rally here as the sun dips in behind some clouds over the waterway, and that means one thing and one thing only. It's going to get chilly in a hurry. So runners on the corners for the Lady Indians. Carver swings on the first pitch, fouls it back for strike one. Of course, we talked about playing Holmes on Monday. Is that pitch in there for a strike? Holmes splits today against East Mississippi. East Mississippi takes game one, nine to nothing. Holmes rallies to take game two, five to four. So that was a big matchup in North Division play. Of course, Holmes returning 11 starters from last season. Going to be one of those that's going to be favored to give a run at the North title. As that pitch hit foul, 0-2 stays the count now on Watterson. So you can tell the starting to get a little dark here at the ballpark. The lights are on as we're in the bottom of the fourth. ICC leads it 6-2. to two. Watterson reaches out, hits a grounder. First baseman gloves, throws over in time. Just beats Watterson trying to sprint down the line. Score that one 3-4 to four if you're scoring at home. And so now your score after four complete, six to two, ICC leads Northwest here in game two.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a pitching change now for ICC. This is Kara Harper, who was playing in right field, comes in to pitch. Replacing her in right field is Rachel Elder, who was in left field. Replacing Rachel in left field is Lakin Shankle. Shankle seeing her first action of the day. She's come in a couple of times as a courtesy runner for the catcher. So she will now be in defensively for the Lady Indians. 6-2 to two is your score. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Lady Indians trying to earn a split today with Northwest. As this is going to be... Hold on one second. We get the, everyone squared away here. This is Nimick at the plate. Swings on the first pitch. Fouled out of play for strike one. So Harper, or excuse me, Hopper in the circle. Swung on and missed by Nimick for strike two. 0 oh and 2 is the count. Hopper got the win in game two against Northeast in relief duty, and that time quickly gets her first strike out of the day. We talked about Hopper is out of Caldonia, a outfielder slash pitcher. Actually, just call her slash, as we said. She can play infield as well. If she's listed as a utility player, that first pitch drifts high for a ball. That pitch. Batter committed to the swing. Even with the count now at one and one. Six two is your score. One one pitch coming from Hopper. That pitch in there for a strike. One and two now is your count. One two pitch coming that one just couldn't quite get her to chase on it. So two two now is your count. We're in the top of the fifth inning, ICC leading six two. That pitch called a ball. Three two now is your count. As even the batter kind of looked back at the umpire that time, thinking that she had went down on strikes. This pitch popped up. And Carver calls everyone off and gets the pop out for out number two. So two away here in the top of the fifth. Lady Indians trying to earn the split today with Northwest. That pitch hit, fouled back for strike one. This is Dean, the leadoff batter here for the Rangers. That pitch for strike two. And strike three, so a quick three up, three down inning for Hopper as she gets Dean looking here to end the fifth. 6-2, Lady Indians. We'll be back with more right after this.
And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen, as we now move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Six to two, Lady Indians lead it. This is going to be Emily Henderson, who doubled and scored a run her last time up, will lead things off in the fifth. Henderson swings on the first pitch, pops it up. Second baseman drifts over and gets the first out of the inning. In the circle, still for Northwest, is Jessica Holliday. And now this will be Bonner. Bonner reached on an error, scored a run on an error her first time up, walked and scored a run her second time up. Stands in, takes that first pitch for strike one. Once again, we do want to thank everyone for tuning in for this webcast today. Want to thank everyone tuning in for Northwest. Check swing, couldn't hold up, and goes through for strike two. Coach Pate making his way back to the press box. Said it has gotten cold outside. That sun tucks away in behind the waterway across the way, and it don't take any time for it to get chilly out here at the ballpark. 0-2 pitch coming. Just outside for a ball. One and two is the count now. One away, bottom of the fifth, ICC leading 6-2. If you're just now joining us, the Indians fell in game one, four to nothing to Northwest, trying to earn the split today. In other division action, East Mississippi, Holmes split today. So this is going to be a tough, tough race as the Lady Indians try to defend their back-to-back -back North Division titles. We talked about the exciting finish to the season that we expect in baseball. Should be equally exciting here in softball. And then that time, chases a pitch, a fastball just outside for strike three. Bonner is technically retired for the first time today. So two away now here in the fifth. And this is going to be Lankford. Last time we saw Lankford, she put a charge into one. For a three-run home run. And that was a big one as it's now 6-2. to two. Lankford swings on the first one, fouls it off for strike one. Our next webcast will be Monday afternoon as the Lady Indians will take on Holmes in a North Division doubleheader. And then baseball, we will join them next Saturday at Northeast That'll also be on fm95radio.com as well as 95.7 FM out of Amory. You can tune in there. We'd love to see you out wearing red at the ballpark to help support the Indians against the rivals. So Lankford at the dish now, behind in the count, and swing and a miss. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Holiday. It's a three-up, three-down inning here in the fifth. We're still 6-2 to two here in game two between ICC and Northwest.
And welcome back to action as we move to the top of the sixth inning. Lady Indians leading 6-2 to two over Northwest, trying to earn the split today in this North Division duel. Hopper is still in the circle for the Lady Indians. First pitch in there for strike. This is Helton at the dish for Northwest. Been a good pace to this game today, and I probably shouldn't have said that because then I want to jinx this, but... Just eclipsing the hour and a half mark as we're now in the top of the sixth. At that time, trying to get the outside corner or get her to chase one out of the zone. Didn't do so. Now the count goes one and two on Helton. Helton 0 for 2 on the day. Ground out to the pitcher her last time up. Ground out to second her first time up. Looks at that one for ball two. Two and oh, or excuse me, two and two now the count on Helton. As the Davis Event Center is rocking right now with the Bluegrass Festival going on, as that is a strikeout looking third strikeout of the game for Hopper. I tell you, I don't think it's going to rival Coach Payton out your back up here. I don't think it's going to rival that championship night that we had in there. Uh, it was a fun, fun night. Probably one of the most electric atmospheres I've seen in the event center in my four years of working here at ICC. That first pitch in there for a strike. This is Andy Barrett at the dish. She walked her last time up, advanced on a wild pitch, and came around to score on a pass ball. She flew out to third her first time up. That pitch low for a ball. But a great event going on across the way is raising money for the regional rehab. All the proceeds, every dime of it, goes towards them. As that pitch fouled out of play for strike two. And you can just look across the way right now. Of course, I know you can't see it on your screen if you're watching this one at home, but there are a lot of cars all over the place over there. Matter of fact, some of the parking stretching near the softball field. Is that pitch high for a ball? I believe the count now is two and two on Barrett. Six to two is your score. We're in the top of the sixth inning. That pitch high for a ball now three and two is a count here on Barrett. Don't want to lose her here if you're Hop. That pitch high for a ball. So back-to-back -back walks now issued to Andy Barrett. One away here in the top of the sixth inning. And this is going to be Alford at the plate. Alford Singled her first time up. Her courtesy runner, Tori Turnipseed, advanced on a couple of wild pitches and scored on a wild pitch. That was in the second inning. As a matter of fact, both runs today as that pitch gets away. Throw down to first is not in time. Close play over at first. Henderson came up to cover the bunt. Just couldn't quite find her quick enough to put on the tag. That pitch high for a ball. One and one now is the count. Let's give you a real quick scoring recap. The ICC jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the bottom of the first on an RBI ground out by Carver and an RBI single by Watterson. So that scored Dillard and Moore in the bottom of the first. Northwest answered, as we talked about, when Turnip Seed replacing Alford on the bases as a courtesy runner scored on a wild pitch. ICC got the run back when Bonner reached on an error, scored on an error in the bottom half of the second. And then the big difference maker so far in this game in the bottom of the third inning was a three-run bomb by Ashley Lankford. Put the Lady Indians up 6-1. to one. Northwest got a run back in the fourth when Andy Barrett, who is on first now, drew a walk, advanced on a wild pitch. 
and scored on a pass ball. That is your Trustmark Bank, I guess you say, scoring update here as that pitch goes high. Check swings that didn't go. And so 3-2 is now the count. That time, Hopper gets her swing and snap throw down to first, not in time. Almost a strike him out, throw him out deal. But Hopper has come in and she is dealing. She has got four strikeouts against six batters face. She's walked one. The other put out was a pop out to Cat Carver. Check swing, fouled it off. As we're getting on our way in game two for the Indians, TJ Watson will be the starting pitcher. They will be playing East Central. That pitch high and inside. Even the count now at one and one. Runner on first with two outs here for Northwest. This is Alex Barrett. She is one for one of the day with a walk. That pitch finds the zone for a strike. Mesa count now one and two. This pitch popped up, trouble, shortstop, calling everyone off and makes the play for out number three. So Northwest, no runs off, no hits, one walk, no errors. Six to two is your score as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. Kara Harper. Hopper will lead things off here. Swings on the first pitch, fouls it back for strike one. Hopper took over for Hawkins in the fifth inning. As the Lady Indians lead it 6-2. Here at the bottom of the six, trying to earn a split with Northwest. That pitch, low for a ball. Northwest took game one, four to nothing. Questionable call, put three runs on the board, eventually put three runs on the board for Northwest, but even take away those three runs, Northwest still picked up a one to nothing win. This pitch lifted to the outfield, center fitter comes underneath. And gets the out. So now, excuse me, this was supposed to be Rachel Elder, but coming to the plate is going to be number seven. This is Henry. Henry saw an at-bat in the first game. So now she will come in to bat for Rachel Elder. Elder 0 for 2 on the day, but she has put a charge in a couple of 
fly balls today. A pair of them, one of them in game one, and one of them in game two actually had the center fielders back against the wall for the pop outs. Henry stands in, takes that first pitch on the outside corner for strike one. Henry saw that drop ball fall in the zone for strike two. Quickly ahead in the count now is Holiday 0-2. One out, bottom of the six. ICC leads it 6-2 to two here in game two against Northwest. That pitch high for a ball. That pitch fouled off. Staying alive at the plate is Henry. Henry is a freshman. She's out of North Pontotoc High School. Of course, North Pontotoc now being coached by former ICC All-American, C.C. Austin. Henry chases that pitch a little bit out of the zone for strike three. So now back to the top of the lineup we go with Heather Dillard. Dillard, two for three on the day. She has scored a run. Last time up, she popped out on a bun and tipped as it went out to the pitcher. Time is called. Dillard, dribbler to the second baseman, toss over for out number three. So a quick three up, three down, bottom of the sixth inning. ICC coming back three outs away from earning the split today with Northwest. They lead it six to two as we move to the top of the seventh. And welcome back to action. Lady Indians up 6-2 to two as we're at the top of the seventh inning. This is Kimes in to bat. She replaces Dias at the dish. She was the starting pitcher today. Got roughed up in her four first uh, batters, first four batters before she was knocked out of the circle. Quickly ahead in the count now is Hopper, 0-2. And Hopper gets her to chase one, ball gets away, throws down to first in time, so strikeout, throw out. for out number one here in the top of the seventh. 
Kimes that time kind of headed back to the dugout. Might have had a chance to make it down. He's had a hard time digging the ball out once it got away. Now this is Vance coming to the dish. That first pitch low for a ball to Vance. Once again, we want to say a special thank you for everyone tuning in to today's webcast. Also, a special welcome to our friends in Cenotopia or throughout the Northwest area watching today's broadcast. Remind you, these games will be available afterwards here on Ustream if you'd like to go back and watch them later. We had trouble with basketball a couple of times saving some games, but today, knock on wood, so far so good. That pitcher ball, two and one now goes the count here on Vance. Of course, I know for many of you Northwest fans watching this one, Kevin Maloney will have broadcast throughout the season on iHigh. Is that pitch in there for a strike? So you can visit nwccrangers.com to check out their broadcast. Heck, if you want to watch us again, you can check out letsgoicc.com for future broadcast as well. Follow us on Twitter at letsgoicc for more information. There's the sixth strikeout of the game for Kara Hopper. Hopper is dealing today, folks. She came in in the fifth to relieve Hawkins, who if things stay the way they are today, uh, right now, Hawkins will be in line for the win. That pitch high, as that was a big, big shot by Nimick. Foul that one back for strike two. 0-2 now is the count here. ICC a strike away from earning the split today. 6-2 to two is your score. We're in the top of the seventh. Hopper trying to close the door on this one. Oh, and the umpire's not quite ready to go home. A lot of times in those situations, the umpire says, Hey, you know what? I'm getting hungry. Want to go to Pizons, grab a pizza, I'm going to go ahead and call that strike three. But he didn't do it that time. One and two. Pop up, out of play. And the count will stay one and two. Hard shot to the third baseman. Picks up, throws across the way, and that will do it. The Lady Indians earn the split today with Northwest with a game two, six to two victory here an exciting day of softball. Once again, we do thank everyone for tuning in to this webcast today at Let's Go ICC. We'll see you Monday when the Lady Indians play host to Holmes here in Fulton. That game scheduled for our opening pitch of one o'clock.